my. Oh, we have not talked about this the entire time, and we may be a week or two late, but this does need to be delved into deeply. <laughs> we have watched the Stars docu-series Seduced and the HBO document docu-series The Vow. Well, let's rephrase that. I watched Seduced. And I watched about episode three of The Vow and just gracefully <laughs> bowed out. I couldn't okay. take those people serious. And then after watching Seduce, my opinion was just reinforced with what I thought of the of the actors that were in The Vow. Understood. Understood. Yes. <laughs> um, and if you do not know what both of these uh, docu series, docu you know, documentaries are about. Basically, there was a cult called Nexium, uh, which was stationed in the headquarters were in Albany, but they were stationed all over the globe. And it was run by Keith Rainier. I believe that's his name. Keith Rainier, I believe. And, um, you know, he basically had this harem of, of female adult, sex women. Adult grown women. Mm, no, that's not, it's not, that's actually not true. Really? Remember. There were um, kids involved in that? Oh, yes. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, there were, he had counts of... of, of uh, well, uh, okay, I'm sorry. Remember, Go. he got the uh, Mexican... He got the two Mexican girls pregnant. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, it was... It was so, um, so the, this documentary was about how he had created something called DAS, and that was a secret uh, society within the Nexium... Uh, organization and these women were basically slaves to him to do everything that he wanted and he was brought up on child uh, trial charges of sex trafficking because he was you know this was good he was doing dealing with the women and stuff like that all over the world and so you know a lot of people uh, were indicted on it. The Bronfman, uh, I'm not a Claire Bronfman, who was the heiress to the Seagram's empire. Uh, Allison Mack, if you know uh, Smallville, she played Chloe. And um, I'm not sure who else, but it, yeah, the documentary was very eye opening. There were salacious moments when they talked about branding women, the women that were in the slaves, the D DOS. Uh, society were branded and the brand itself was just basically the initials of Keith Rainier and uh, Allison Mack. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on and on about the craziness of, of this, um, of the documentaries. Well, let me, the reason why I bowed out of DeVal was because there's a character that's narrating the series. His, his name is Mark. And he was a paid, he was a paid, um, I guess you could say a paid higher up of Nexium. And it came one of the episodes when his wife told, I think it was the second or third episode when his wife was telling him Mark that, you know, Mark Vincente, his wife was telling him that she's not, she doesn't feel safe. She needs to get out of there, get out of this place. And he wouldn't believe his wife. Uh, he needed extra evidence of convincing before he followed his, he protected the woman that you're supposed to love, love and cherish. He needed more convincing than what his wife was saying. When I saw that episode, it just turned me off. It turned me off completely. I, I couldn't watch anymore. But then when I watched Seduced, and keep in mind, Mark Vicente is his name? Vincente, like Vincent? Mark, Vincente. Mark, Vincente was ahead of the AV. He produced and shot all of these, um, you know, I guess you could call them these uplifting videos or, or the characters behind Nexium that, that they use to rope people in. And within these videos, you have Keith Rainier saying some of the most insane nonsense that you will ever hear a man say. And it's but no you one- went, But you didn't see it in the vow, remember? Yes, you, <laughs> yes that- those um, tapes, for some odd reason, he didn't have the availability to show these tapes in the vow in which Keith was talking about rape isn't bad or raping a child is is on um, part of sex, is part of control. And I'm saying to myself, how are you as a man, as any man sitting there and condoning what this asshole is saying? And come to find out, none of these none of these tapes were present in the vow, but they were all in seduced. 
So uh, this, I mean, that guy needs to be put under under the um, jail and just. Well, he was he was uh, uh, he received 120 years uh, for but, uh, charges. And as far as I'm concerned, the two of the people that were in the vow, they it almost looks like they were snitching. So first first come first serve. So because they were receiving funds for their contributions to Nexium, they were roping people in. They, they might not have known about the branding, but they knew enough to know that this guy is insane. And it, I don't know. It, it just left a bad taste. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I, I completely agree. When you see the, the vow, it's clear that Mark Vincente, uh, who was the, uh, I guess, media director of Nexium, had a large role in creating the story, creating the narrative. Because it pegged yeah. It's almost like he formulated a script to sort of minimize his involvement in the the heinous acts that were that were done with. He might not have been he might not have been present for branding anyone or having intercourse with anyone, but he was part of the reason why those women were in that position that they they were. Most definitely. Um yeah, like as you watch the vow, it's told from the perspective of basically him and um, I can't remember her name, but there was an, another uh, uh, high ranking member and, and she was actually branded and was a part of DOS. Uh, but it was basically talking about how their eyes were open to what Keith Rainier was really doing. The, the, the problem with the vow was that it, it did not really dig deep into like just exactly how twisted um, Keith Rainier was. And so you're watching this and, and it's still, you know, painting him to, what it focuses more on in the vow is how he manipulates people mm -hmm. uh, with his charisma. Like, it's kind of like he's charismatic and he's telling you good things and da da da. Yeah. And that's how we were pulled under his sway. That seemed to be the focus of the vow. But seduced, hey, yeah. <laughs> seduced really just went in on he is depraved sexually. Like the only the only objective a documentary has is supposed to tell you the full story, nothing but the facts. The vow, the objective was to paint Mark and the other the I other think character was Bonnie, Bonnie oh, in a in a less compromising light that they should have been, that if HBO was really going to do a documentary, they need, and they, and they are doing a season two, those who need to answer a shitload of questions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Bonnie is Mark Vincente's wife. So, but that's, so Bonnie is not the one I'm talking about exactly. I can't remember the other woman um, that yes. actually was br uh, branded. Um, but, you know, but here's the thing. That is like I, I would. I'm, I'm gonna have to disagree with you a little bit because with documentaries, you the, the, you try to be objective, but the reality is documentaries are crafted by directors, and when you start a documentary, you start from a perspective. Like you you start from a a, a point of view, and no matter how uh, objective you try to be, you are telling the story that you you think is 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 real. Well, now, the vow left a lot on oh, the no, cutting no, no. table. Oh, no. Mark Vincente <laughs> <laughs> really painted a, a, a alternate picture of Keith Rainier. Now, but this being said, Seduce mm -hmm. did, did go really hard on Keith Rainier and just like how, like, you know, his sexual uh, uh, issues, his problems. But, and the main character was, I believe her name was, uh, India Oxenberg, and she was a victim of DOS. Uh, at least that's how they they painted the picture. I'm not gonna say at least that's how they she was. And who question. was and who was her and who was her her own um, coach? Mark uh, Mark, Vis, Vicente. Mark Vicente. Right. So you and who a, treated her like shit? Mark Vicente. Vicente. Right. And so you got an alternative view of what was going on in Nexium, and she spoke about how there was a vested interest for Mark and the other woman, which I, I wish I could remember her name, um, but 
there was a vested interest in them bringing in as many members as possible because they all, it was almost like they got commission on how many people they brought in. Here's, here, here's the rough draft of what Nexium was. It more or less ran like a pyramid scheme. Right. In order, to, in order for the coaches to make money, they had to bring people in. The more people you brought in, the more likely her you were able to, to, to get funds from bringing the people in. Right, because the whole... The whole the structure of the whole uh, uh, enterprise was buying more yeah. and more videos, audio classes. Exactly. Right. The more you bought in the video. <laughs> Keith Keith was right here. Uh huh. And Mark and everybody else is right below. <laughs> right. You know the more products you purchase, and you know, and the products were like exorbitant in terms of prices. So yeah, it was a pyramid scheme. And they, you know, the reality is Mark and the other women just pretty much bailed when they, what it looked like to me. I'm not, this is not factual. What it looked like to me was once they saw that the, um, that the wagons were circling and they realized that, oh, wow, he really did do all these things. Then they kind of jumped ship. Mm -hmm. But like allegations were coming out consistently about, his relationship with women, his relationship with children, just all these things were coming out constantly. And no and one did there were there were rumors about him before he even started Nexium. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, with that being said, it's kind of like, okay, so really, what are we talking about here? Like, I mean, you're saying that you knew nothing until mm -hmm. this last, you know, situation. So, I mean, yeah. That, yeah, I, I, yeah. But, but that being said, Jumping back to Seduce, Seduce showed all these negative things and it told the story from India Oxenberg's perspective. But then when you get to the very end of the last episode, because Nexium only had four, uh, Seduce only had four episodes, it then started to paint this weird picture because India Oxenberg did round up, bring in more slaves. And so, you know, it becomes a problem. You can, you can say that you were a victim. But, but Indian Oxenberg didn't financially benefit the way the I way Mark. I don't know if that's accurate. Like well, the if she was, if she was, she wasn't. She wasn't rolling in funds the way Mark no. was. No, but the problem where so now here's where it gets problematic for India. It gets problematic because she brought in more people. Her bringing in more people and not more people to Nexium. She brought in more people to Das. And so she had to, she collected collateral and that is extortion. And so now the documentary takes a weird turn where it's kind of like, yeah, I realize now I have to fight, fight back and I have to save these people. And it's kind of like, but dude, you extorted them. <laughs> like for all of your, for all of the crimes that were inflicted upon you, you turned around and you did the exact same thing to the people under you. Like once you ask them for collateral, you know, private things to maintain their silence, that's extortion and that's illegal. And so now we're, it's problematic. And so it seemed like the end of Seduced was basically trying to say she was not, she was not responsible for her actions. So essentially what Tom and I are saying is that <laughs> Netflix or Hulu or Amazon needs to do their own documentary, <laughs> completely objective and completely <laughs> with just the facts for everyone to see. Because Seduce started out in a great place. Well, not well, not a great place. It started out in a more, <laughs> a <great> a more <laughs> ob objective place than Deval did. Yes. And, um, but if I had to pick, a, but if I had a preference, I would say seduce. The okay. vow is the vow is like a fictional or a snitch telling of a crime drama. Yeah, they're going to do everything to incriminate everybody else, but not to incriminate themselves at a fair prosecution. Yeah, I mean, but that being said, you definitely should watch both because it is very interesting to see what was going on in this. Um, in this cult, you know, it was a cult, and um, I watch all documentaries about cults. <laughs> cults are interesting. <laughs> yeah, because Tommy, Tommy's thinking of starting one. Well, not starting <laughs> one, maybe joining one. <laughs>
<laughs> Maybe join it. <laughs> I can't handle all of that responsibility. <laughs> Um, oh, you know what? You are a black man, so by the time you get five people, it'll be shut down. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> exactly. Could you imagine if they were saying it was 10 white women following me <laughs> around somewhere? Oh, yeah. Yep, exactly. It'd be over. <laughs> it'd be over. In a second. You've been listening to Two Brothers at a Water Cooler with Mike and Tom. Produced by Jamie Fernandez and Peter Bune. Rate and review this show on Apple Podcasts, and you might find your review in a future episode. 